Good morning, everyone. Um, today I'm going to start prepping the audio um, replacement for the 2005 Colorado. Um, just to kind of show you what I'll be putting on the Kicker DSC670 for the front and rear. Um, for the component tweeters, be the KST20. Um, this is the amp kit for the underseat sub setup, RWK10. The radio that we're going with is a BE7ACP C and it does come with this rear dash camera deal, so I'll be installing that as well. Um, this is the subwoofer, um, it's all built in amp, things like that. So, pretty self explanatory once I kind of show it to you. RW10CA, um, the dash kit you will need is a 95 2001 the antenna adapter, let's see, would be the 40 GM10. Um, Speaker adapter harnesses. Uh, let me see what this one is. 724568. And then for the wiring harness, it's the AX GM CL2. This also will have the uh, reverse um, output signal, so you can hook up your rear view camera signal to the harness itself so you don't have to go and search for one so that works pretty well um, let's go ahead and start setting up the Colorado and start off with the radio all right I'm downstairs here um, kind of getting everything wired I've got the soldering gun or soldering iron heating up um, once you unbox everything I'm not gonna do that since unboxing to me is kind of pointless but I have everything laid out of what does come with the box and everything so once you open it, it'll come with the harness, it'll come with the mic, and obviously the rear backup camera. Um, always lay out your um, manual just for reference. Um, I don't really need that, but I like to double check anyway, just to be sure. Um, the radio is right here. Leave that for the customer to pull out. So kind of gives them a, a good feeling, I suppose. But um, I know you guys are going to ask how to bypass the video playback. Um, I do not recommend doing that. Obviously, I recommend you hooking it up to the parking brake for safety, but not a lot of people want that. So, again, if you're going to do the bypass, I'm not responsible for any damages or if you're involved in an accident involving that, that particular feature, um, that's a risk kind of you have to take. Um, to bypass that, all you have to do is ground the video playback or park and brake wire. It's a negative signal, so all you got to do is shoot ground to it. Um, that'll eliminate the need to do the park and brake. Like I said, that is a, um, a choice that you have to make for yourself. I don't recommend it. I always recommend it to go to the park and brake. But for this instant, I know the owner, so he knows the the risk and things like that so I will bypass it for him um, here's the disclaimer from boss audio as you can see obviously hook it up the right way with the with the parking brake um, the only time the radio will be able to do a video playback is when you have the vehicle on the stop and the parking brake is engaged um, the bypass will eliminate that so you could be driving and moving and things like that and still be able to have the video playback. Like I said, read the warning and make the choice for yourself. So, um, for the um, access harness, like I said, this is pretty um, color-coded. Um, here's the diagram. Obviously, you need the speaker signal out. Um, you need the power. Um, that violet white is what you will need for the rear brake camera so you don't have to trace a signal so you can hook that up you just hook it up to that violet white um, pretty much that's you won't really need the SWC input since this particular Colorado doesn't have a um, steering wheel control so we don't need that um, overall that's about Really, there is. You don't need the red violet front camera power since I'm not doing the front camera on this one. So, pretty much that's all it really needs.
Let's go ahead and start wiring everything up. I'm going to show you and guide you what you need. So I went ahead and started the um, soldering process. Um, I always start off with the speakers. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you got the whites, the gray, the green, and the purple. These are all your speaker um, signals. Um, the positive one would be the solid colors. And the one with the stripe are negative. So just kind of match them. Um, just be careful kind of wiring them. Just because um, the harness itself have kind of like the same color. Like the green and things like that. See how like this one is green but it's red. Um, just kind of be sure and double check everything when you wire everything up. That way you're not hooking up the wrong wires. Um, the next one I'll be doing is the power signals. So again match everything up. It'll be the same color. Red. Um, yellow and black got on my finger right here go ahead and do that and then we're almost done here is the um, finished result um, this one's for the steering wheel control you don't need it so I just kind of put tape on it these are the front and rear camera power um, again you don't need that since this only has rear um, you might be wondering what these two wires are this is for the reverse signal. This will go to the yellow wire on the um, extension cable for the rear view camera. So it will provide power when you put it on reverse. It's also hooked up to the reverse um, input on the radio. That way it will switch over whenever you put it on reverse and show it on the screen. This is the remote turn on. Since this is an amp and sub installation as well, that's already inputted. And then the factory sub. Um, I don't know if it has one. If it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to provide no power, but I've ran into issues before where this thing, I didn't think there was going to be a, a, a amplifier in the vehicle and then ended up having one, so I just hook it up anyway. But anyway, that's for the remote turn on. This goes to the amp um, input, and this is the reverse signal. So overall, um, when you do program these, it does require to be programmed to the vehicle. Um, it's nothing crazy. All you have to do is make sure this thing is connected before you plug it in and make sure the vehicle is off position. Um, do not plug this in and then plug this in after. That's just the instruction, so just kind of follow along. Um, it also says on the installation right here, connect the harness into the interface first and then to the wiring harness of the vehicle. So. But yeah, overall, it's pretty much ready to go to the, rate, to the vehicle. Let's go ahead and prep that and start taking it apart. All right, next step would be to put the dash kit on. Um, the dash kit just kind of is pretty simple. Just put those, it matches the slot. And you want the two openings for the screws on this side and then the one on the right. But so far, that's what it looks like. Use four screws just to kind of hold it a lot better. Um, get your antenna adapter ready and let's start taking apart the radio. To get started, all you need is one of these. Just slowly pry from the very bottom, starting off. And all it is is just nothing but clips. So try to work your way a little bit at a time. That way you don't end up breaking any parts. So once you get that popped off, um, all you have to do is unplug the hazards and then the whole thing comes off. Oh yeah, you, you need to unplug this one too. It's the, it looks like the traction control. But this is the hazard, traction control. As you can see, 7 mil. Unplug that, and then I'll show you what the back looks like. Old radio is out. Just one plug. Then 10 adapter. Um, it looks like you don't need to bend this, since the radio is half a den size. Um, it's one of those kind of small bodied ones, so... You do need to bend this if you have one that's a full size double den because it will hit this. But I think I'm just going to end up bending it to the back. Let me see if I can do it real quick. Might be able to actually break the weld off. Yeah, it's that easy. So now you have more room back there. As you can see, I already got the 
rear camera input connected to the harness that's going to be going to the rear camera and also the 12 volt signal hooked up to that wire that I showed you that's going to be the reverse output um, I zip tied the harness going to the vehicle and then mounted the box right there so they're kind of out of the way so yeah so far that's where we are and we're going to keep going and move on to the next step if you're wondering where you would run the microphone some people run it here but since this is a sticky type i always try to run it right in front so it's direct view on where you're talking so i ran it obviously i had to take the cover off um, you kind of run it behind these little clip holders run it up on the channel and then right there is basically you'll put your hand inside there and catch the wire so it's pretty easy go ahead and do that and then plug it into the mic spot all right since we we got the radio mounted we are going ahead and um, do the reverse camera deal um, the best one that I found was it looks like the the shifter so go ahead and follow that zip tie it along with it and the opening is right here so just cut a little slit pull back the grommet and the wire will be underneath the vehicle for ease of access so yeah use this makes life easier so here it is I got everything wired up got everything ran um, obviously I'm gonna cut these zip ties but I wanted to show you just cut a little slit right here and have the wire going in there put everything back so no water will get in um, pretty much the wires underneath and let's go ahead and start running it to the back so I'm getting ready to do the tweeters um, I'm actually heating up my heat gun now um, this is how I majority installed the um, tweeters is by the hot ABS plastic glue gun um, this is the kicker that came with it so it's nicely small so it kind of fits inside perfectly um, that's where I'm gonna use the hot glue gun to hold it in three points so I mean right now it's kind of in there but not strong enough to hold um, also do not forget your base blockers um, I will be using the factory um, plug I'm gonna cut it and then connect it here directly so it can still be removed in and out so like I said I'm already heating up my heat gun and then we'll go ahead and do that so while I'm while we're waiting for that thing to dry up let's go ahead and start doing the front speakers um, it'll come with the speaker terminals and things like that so you just have to connect it to the factory one um, here's the speakers um, it should just directly connect to it I guess we'll find out once we get everything mounted there and then we'll see what we need to do alright guys I just went ahead and used uh, self tapping screws as you can see you might wonder why the uh, speaker wires are sticking out like that um, the reason why I mounted this speaker upside down is that way I can pull this wire and then zip tie it to the harness so it's away from the window glass when you roll it up and down so I'm getting ready to put the panels back on I got the tweeter mounted as you can see positive negative tweeters mounted yes it does not look pretty so don't say it but this thing is hard as it gets and the only time this thing would come off is if you heat that ABS plastic back up so I would suggest you guys do the same or you can use hot glue or whatever you want to use but this is what I use so you can follow it or you can use other options as long as it holds in there pretty good then you should be all good all right since I didn't show you guys how to take off the driver's side front um, these ones are pretty easy um, you just take the screw right here Phillips and then two Phillips right here and the whole door panel literally pops up but make sure you lift the channel right here I would always suggest starting from here to here to here to here just to kind of get that lifted up and then once you get halfway to the middle and pop push the door panel up so this thing would release from the channel so you don't end up breaking it so yeah that's pretty easy to take off go ahead and do that and let's move on to the passenger side so for the rear speaker it's the same process as the front it's just a lot easier and quicker um, I did have to use the factory um, speaker adapter or the factory speaker spacer deal um, if you try to put this on directly to here um, it'll hit the glass so you definitely have to use these 
um, I just use four points of new screw holes that way it holds it a lot better so but overall it's not too bad it's a pretty quick process let's move on to the next one uh, here we are for the sub that's what the sub looks like so it's a 10 inch 800 watt um, it does come with these little leg things um, obviously the base knob which I will be hooking up so um, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the power wire and let's get started to get started with the amp go ahead and cut a little slip right there that's how you're gonna get the power wire in there um, the power wire is pretty small so don't cut anything too big um, there is nothing on the back so once you cut that little slit you can just insert the wire through there and just kind of leave it hanging as it's gonna go right here so you want as much slack as you can so moving from the inside um, you're gonna go ahead and start tracing these wire harness right here um, going to the back and then um, we're gonna figure out where to put the um, ground so let's go ahead and start zip tying that up and then move on to the back uh, yeah we got the ground one over here um, I ended up grinding it here um, there's nothing behind it so I guess I just be careful not to drill anything in the back um, I didn't want to drill on the bottom because that's going to start rusting. Some people drill it through the frame rail type of deal right here, right here. Um, I don't like it that way. At least this one is pretty much still inside the vehicle. So that's the ground. Um, I did run it, put a little slit right here, and then ran it from the bottom. So that way it's not, it doesn't look all ghetto. At least you don't really see the wires. So, but here's all the wires getting it ready. Um, because I'll keep going on. Just wanted to show you where I grounded it. And then I'll go ahead and run that along with the power and all that. So we are almost done. So we just finished the installation. Um, obviously the power wire is all zip tied in. Loomed. Um, I showed you where I ran it. But I'll show you where the I decided to mount the amp. Um, you can see it right here. It's neatly placed in um, you might be wondering what these foams are um, these were the foams that the uh, the sub itself or the the product itself is held by in the box I just kind of trimmed it down um, what I was doing here is basically pushing down on the sub I mean it is screwed to the carpet but the uh, the foam does kind of help push it down and wedge it in between the seat since there's not really a lot of places to mount this big thing so that's what I came up with um, you can't see it from the top, you can only see it if you actually peek to it. But here's the finished installation. So hopefully you guys like it. And if you guys don't mind subscribing, if you have any questions about the product, let me know. Um, if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine too. I don't mind that. So, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you guys think. All the products are right there. So, yeah. Everything is done. Let me just show you what the radio looks like. I did run the uh, the RCAs down here. That way it'll be easy to access for the customer. Show you what this thing looks like turned on. Kind of have to watch out for YouTube. That way they don't delete or demonetize the video. So you, I can't record whenever the Android is hooked up. It won't allow me to record it. So I ran out of space on my SD card recording. So that's why it cut off. But just to kind of show you real quick. Um, if you use the Android, I was trying to record it. But my, I was hooking up my phone and it won't allow me to record and be on the Android Auto at the same time. So just kind of give.